In this video, we're going to talk about unit conversions. The way that unit conversions work is we're going to use a conversion factor to multiply by a starting number to get to the units that we want it to have. So, for example, if you know that something is 12 feet long and you want to go from feet to yards, you understand that one foot is equal to three yards and so you can figure out that 12 feet is equivalent to four yards. The amount of that length has not changed, the 12 feet and the four yards only the unit has. So we're going to use what's called the factor label method. And what happens is we multiply a value by conversion factors and that lets us convert it to different units. What we want to do is cancel the units we don't want and then we want to leave the units that we do want. And when we use a conversion factor, the numerator and the denominator of that conversion factor need to be equal to each other. So one yard equals three feet, okay? So let's look at that example for just a minute. Okay, so if we have, let's talk about our example. We have one yard equal to three feet. We know that if we start off with feet, if we have a number that has feet in it, we're going to set up a conversion factor, and this is what a conversion factor always looks like. You're going to start off by setting up a set of parentheses with a, a line in the middle, the numerator and the denominator, and we're going to put things where we want them to make our units cancel. If we start off with feet here, then we want feet here on the bottom to cancel out, and we want to put yards on the top so that that will be left as our unit, and feet will cancel feet will cancel, and we know that one yard is equal to three feet. Now if we started off with yards, we still set up a conversion factor the same way. But in this case, since yards are here, we need yards on the bottom to cancel, and we need feet on top. And what we want to do is look at our equivalencies here. The one goes, goes with the yards, and the three goes with the feet. So it's, it's fairly straightforward with things you're comfortable with. But now we're going to have to start dealing with metric units and scientific notation and that sort of thing. So it gets a little more complicated. So let's look at this. Hopefully you're working on memorizing your scientific notation. We know that the prefix centi is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 2 of whatever its base unit is. So if it's centiliters, it's 1 times one centiliter equals one times ten to the negative two liters. One centimeter is equal to one times ten to the negative two meters. So depending on what our base unit is, if we start off with, in this example, let's say that we start off with meters, some number of meters, and we're going to set up our conversion factor, always think about the units. Meters goes on the bottom to cancel, centimeters goes on top. And then we're going to put the 1 with the centimeter and the 1 times 10 to the negative 2 with the meters on the bottom. And if you start with centimeters, it's the conversion factor has the same numbers and units in it. It's just flipped. Remember, if centimeters is here, we need centimeters on the bottom to cancel, meters on top, so that that's the unit that we're left with. And, and then we have 1 centimeter here and 1 times 10 to the negative 2 with the meter. And the scientific notation always goes with the base unit. So, so you want to think about this. Do you guys remember Superman, the uh, comic book hero? He was Clark Kent, the newspaper reporter, and he would go into this phone booth and emerge as Superman. It's the same thing with these conversion factors. Meters goes into this conversion factor. Meters cancel, and it comes out as centimeters. Or in this case, vice versa. Centimeters goes into that phone booth. So think of that conversion factor as the, the phone booth for Superman that lets that uh, come out with the correct unit. Let's look a little bit more closely. Let's try a practice problem. So here's something you're probably familiar with, seconds and minutes. So let's set this up. So what we want to do is take our number from our problem and put that at the front. And then we're going to set up this conversion factor, 
parentheses with the little line in the middle. So think about what unit needs to go on the bottom. Seconds. And we're trying to convert to minutes, so we're going to put minutes on top because that's the unit we want to end up with. And hopefully we all know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So anytime we have an equality like that, it can become this conversion factor. And depending on which unit you start with, minutes or seconds, you have to figure out which unit you want to go on the bottom or the top. Go ahead and cancel your units. We're left with minutes, which was what we wanted to do. Hopefully you guys are doing this in your head and you know that this would be four minutes. And if you think about sig figs, this number has two sig figs, this number has one, so our answer should have one. Let's try another example. Here we are back at inches and yards again. So we've got 590 inches. And then we want to convert to yards. Now, some of you may know exactly how many inches are in a yard. Some of us can't remember that. So we might know that in one yard that there are three feet and then in one foot there are 12 inches. So we can do what's called a two-step conversion here. If you can't remember how many inches are in a yard you can use the conversions that you do know. So we need to think about what unit needs to go on the bottom to cancel. So always start with your units. Inches on the bottom and then feet on top, and we know that in one foot there are 12 inches. So remember, any equality like this we can set up as a conversion factor. Now our inches will cancel and leave us with feet. We need to set up another conversion factor to get us to our final unit, which is yards. We're going to end up needing feet on the bottom to cancel and yards on top to leave us with what we want, and we know that one yard is equal to three feet. So feet will cancel. We can go ahead and set, let's put it equal to, and we know that our units are yards. And then what we want to do is go ahead and punch that into your calculator. So when you get that, you want to say, you want to multiply the numbers that are on the top, 590 times one times one, and then you don't want to divide by each of the numbers on the bottom. So 590 times 1 times 1 is 590. Then you want to divide by 12. And then divide again by 3. Don't be tempted to do 590 divided by 12 times 3. So when you punch it into your calculator, it'll be divided by 590 divided by 12 divided by 3. And what that will give you is 16.38 yards. We'll talk about sig figs in a minute. If you punch it into your calculator like this, divided by 12 times 3, that's going to give you an incorrect answer because you're not dividing by both of those. You would have to put that in parentheses. And I think it's just easier to remember the... 590 divided by 12 divided by 3 divide by each of those numbers on the bottom because what happens is you get an order of operations error you have to tell that that those are multiplied but those are on the the bottom of those equations all right and we'll talk about the rounding and the sig figs later on in class let's go ahead and set up another one let's work on a little bit of uh, metric now so 450 milligrams to grams. So again, we're going to start off with the number that we have in our problem and set up that conversion factor. Milligrams on the bottom, that will cancel milligrams, and then grams on top. And what we have to think about is where the scientific notation goes. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you put your scientific notation 
always with your base unit. Your base unit is the one without the prefix. So in this case, milli is a prefix, so we're going to have it with grams. Hopefully at this point you know that the scientific notation for milli is 1 times 10 to the negative third, and then we just put a 1 with the milligrams. And when you go ahead and punch that into your calculator, milligrams will cancel. You'll be left with grams, which is what we wanted. And then when you put that in your calculator, you'll get 0 0.45 grams. So remember, always put the scientific notation that you've memorized with that base unit. And the base unit is that unit that does not have a prefix. So remember that there will be different prefixes and that scientific notation that you memorize is what goes with them. Always put that scientific notation with that base unit. Okay? Let's try another one. So this is centimeters to kilometers. So what's my base unit here? Hopefully you recognize that the base unit, the one without the prefix here, is meters because we're going from centimeters to kilometers. So this then becomes a two-step conversion. What happens is we want to convert to our base unit first and then convert to the unit that we're trying to get. So we're going to go from centimeters to our base unit of meters and then from meters to kilometers. That just became a two-step conversion. The way that you want to, the reason that you want to do this this way is that I don't remember all of the scientific notation for things like centimeters to kilometers or gigameters to decimeters. I just know the scientific notation to get to that base unit. So your first conversion, if you're going from one unit to another that has a prefix, is always going to be to the base unit. So let's put this in. Okay, so we're going to start off with what we have in our problem. 85 centimeters and we're going to set up the conversion and remember we want to go to the base unit first our base unit is meters so think about that we've got meters and centimeters we need centimeters on the bottom to cancel and we need meters on the top because that's the unit we need to go to and then centimeters will cancel we know that our Scientific notation for centi is 1 times 10 to the negative 2. That goes with our base unit always. And then a 1 with our centimeters. Now that we've got it in meters, we want to go from meters to kilometers. So let's set up another conversion factor. We want meters on the bottom to cancel. And then we want kilometers on top. And Hopefully you know that your scientific notation for kilo is 1 times 10 to the third. And then you want to put that with the base unit. Remember that the base unit is the one without the prefix, so that gets 1 times 10 to the third on the bottom with meters and 1 with the kilometers. Now the challenge here is how to put this in your calculator. The button that you use for an exponent is the big E button. So when you punch it into your calculator, you want to use that E button for the exponent. So 85, and then you're going to multiply what's on the top, so times 1 E negative 2, and then you want to divide by what's on the bottom, 1 E 3. And you can leave those 1's out if you want to, that's fine. But the just be aware that when you put those in that you want to use that exponent. If you put in... 85 times 1 times 10 to the negative second divided by 1 times 10 to the third. What it does is, you remember PEMDAS, the order of operations, it takes 85, then it multiplies it by 1, then it multiplies it by 10 to the negative 2, which is fine, it works fine doing this. But when you start to divide, it divides by 1, and then it multiplies that answer by 10 to the third when you actually want it to be divided. So you have to be really careful not to do this. So you want to put in your calculator 85 
times 1 e negative 2 divided by 1 e 3 and that will give you your final answer and remember that meters will cancel here you'll be left with kilometers and the answer that I got was 8.5 times 10 to the negative 4. If you got a different exponent, chances are you punched it into your calculator incorrectly. Make sure that you are using that EE button. So you should have a little button on your calculator that says EE. Sometimes it'll say EXP, depending on which calculator you have but those are the little buttons that you'll want to use. If you're having any trouble punching these in, come and see me for some help during class and I'll be glad to help you uh, to make sure. That'll avoid these order of operations errors even though it's tempting to put it in that way. Let's try one more example. All right, so let's look at this. I know that you're looking at that and going, I have no clue. The base unit on that, remember that it's the one without the prefix. So if you take away the prefixes, we know these prefixes. We know kilo is a prefix, and we know micro is a prefix. So PA has to be the base unit. Even though you don't know what that is, that's a pascal. It's a unit of pressure, and it doesn't really matter. It's because it's a unit that you don't recognize. It works the same way as meters and liters and things that you are familiar with. So just be aware that there will be units that you're unfamiliar with in the class that will come up from time to time. So let's go ahead and set that one up. Try to set it up yourself. Pause the video and then we'll take a look. All right. So start off with the number in your problem, 101.325, and it's kPa. Since we've got a conversion where we're going from one unit with a prefix to another unit with a prefix, that means it needs to be a two-step conversion. So we're going to go from kPa to Pa to micro Pa. That's that little funky U, the little micro. So we're going to set up our first conversion factor. We want lead with our units, kPa on the bottom, and then plain old Pa on the top. Remember that our scientific notation always goes with our base unit. Our scientific notation for kilo is 1 times 10 to the third. And then just put a 1 with the kilopascals. Then our next conversion factor our kilopascals have canceled, and then we've got PA, so we want PA on the bottom to cancel, and then micro PA on the top. Remember that our scientific notation, again, goes with our base unit, 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Make sure you're memorizing those. Now, once you've done that, our PA will cancel. We're left with micro PA, which is what we wanted in our final answer. And then when you put that into your calculator, it's going to be 1.01325 times 10 to the 11th. If you're having any trouble getting these in the calculator, remember to use that E button. So you would start off and you would put in 101. 0.325 times 1e3 divided by 1e negative 6. If you're using, if you're typing in that 1 times 10 to the third or divide by 1 times 10 to the negative 6, that's going to create those order of operations issues. So remember to use your exponent button. See you in class.